and welcome back. At the end of last year, I made a video about how to build a modular techno system. Today, I'd like to show you how I bring my modules together in a patch for techno-oriented performances. We'll go over percussion, melodic voices, and workflow. When I started this channel, I did something similar with a more self-generative, ambient-oriented patch. I made three videos explaining all the different aspects in detail. So if I go too fast over something in this one, do have a look at those videos as well. A lot of the concepts are pretty similar. The biggest difference with this patch is that for more techno-oriented performances, I'd like to have more hands-on control over patterns and sequences. So I bring in the Arturia Beatstep Pro and A to V Project 16N rework for that. If you get value out of these videos, consider a like and subscribe. And have a look at my Patreon if you want to read more about my plans and support this video series. But now, let's dive right in. For a good techno patch, I'd like to set up a solid percussive foundation first. This needs to be something that sounds good, is very flexible, and I can easily improvise with. I use the Beatstep Pro as the main sequencer here. I can use it to program 8 trigger sequences for different sounds. And I like to use the A to V Project 16N rework to have direct control over the different aspects of the sound. This way I create a compact accessible control surface to play and jam with. And mostly just use the modular as the sound engine behind it. But let's start with the drum modules and patches I use in this setup. The first one is the kick. Right now I use the tip top bass drum 808. But like I mentioned in my techno introduction video, it's interesting to have a more flexible module for this if making techno is your main goal. The kick receives a trigger from the Beatstep Pro and I run the output through the Make Noise LXD low pass gate. This one has a bit of resonance built in, which doesn't only sound good, it's also a great way to simultaneously control the punchiness of the kick as well as the volume. To do so, I send a fader output from the 16N rework to the CV input. The output goes directly to an outboard mixer, as I like to have easy access to the EQ and volume of the kick separately. This is also a nice place to overdrive the kick a bit by cranking the mixer's input gain. Next to the bass drum 808, I often use the Basimilus Iteritas Alto for kicks. But it's a very versatile digital drum module that I also use for percussion or dynamic hats. It gets triggered by the Beatstep Pro, but for this one I add some modulation. I generally like to have two LFOs available to modulate some parameters. And I also use a dedicated trigger sequence from the Beatstep Pro that I can plug in wherever I like. For example, into the pitch or spread. The output of the Bassimilus goes to the IntelliGel Linux VCA. And I send a fader from the 16N rework to this VCA to control the volume of the sound. I also use dedicated faders to the decay and attack of the Basimilus for manual control. For hats, I use the MFB Hi-Hat and Cymbal module with just two simple trigger sequences from the Beatstep Pro to the closed and open Hi-Hat. The mix output also goes to a VCA on the Linux, so I can control the volume of the hats with another fader from the 16N rework. Then I send a separate fader to the decay of the open Hi-Hat, again for hands-on control of the sound. Finally, I use the two sides of the 4MS stereo triggered sampler as independent sample players, each receiving their own trigger from the Beatstep Pro. In this setup, I use one of them just to trigger a single sample, like a clap, stabby hit, kick drum, or longer noisy field recording. 
For the other sampler, I like to send a random voltage through an attenuator mixed with a fader from the 16N to the sample select. This way, I can control the selected sample and, if I want, open the attenuator a bit and allow some random sample selection. This works great for short percussive sounds. One of the outputs goes directly to the Linux VCA. The other passes through the second low-pass gate of the Make Noise LXD. Both get a dedicated fader from the 16N rework, so I can control the volumes. I also like to send faders to the sample length. These sample players alone can create a very wide variety of sounds. I made two videos about using sample players for melodic and percussive purposes. So have a look at those videos if you'd like to learn more about that. So if you've been paying attention, you notice the kick went directly to the outboard mixer and the other four parts to the IntelliJ Linux, which I use as a summing VCA, creating a little drum bus. Because the Linux has attenuators on each channel, I can use those to determine how much a fully open slider of the 16N rework will open the VCA and thus use the attenuators to create a good sounding mix when I simply slam open all the faders. Then I use the sum output of the Linux to send a non-kick drum bus to the dupe for A119, which I use as an overdrive to slightly distort the whole percussive part. From there, it goes through a simple delay and reefer pedal for some hands-on tweaking before it finds its way to another input on the outboard mixer for EQ. This sound percussion through effects works great with a setup with a simple 4-channel mixer. If you're planning to do a very clean gig on a great sound system though, it's worth it to bring a bigger mixing desk and have EQ over each of the parts as well as multiple effect sends. And that's all the percussion, a few elements with good hands-on control over each part. This way I can easily make build-ups and keep them interesting with manual tweaking. In this setup, I use two independent melodic voices. Most of the time, they end up being a bass and lead sound, and each of them has their own strength. But both voices can be either. The first voice is made up with the IntelliJ Dixie, through the Syntrotech Echo, the Dupe for Wasp filter, and then a VCA on the IntelliJ Linux. From there, it goes to its own channel on an outboard mixer. The Beatstep Pro's first melodic sequencer sends a 1V per octave signal to the Dixie, as well as a trigger to a simple attack decay envelope on the IntelliJ Quadra. This envelope is mixed with a fader from the 16N rework before it's sent to the filter. This way, I can use either the envelope, the fader, or both to open the filter. A copy of the trigger going to the kick triggers a second envelope on the Quadra, which is mixed in a triad with a copy from the main envelope before going to the Linux VCA. This way I can set the volume of the sound by adjusting the amount of the main envelope to the VCA and I can invert the second envelope for a sidechain effect on bass lines. And finally, to create some motion in this patch, I send a slow random voltage from the mutable instrument peaks to the WASP filter. And another random voltage through an attenuator and then the Syntrotech echo. In this setup, the echo is not used as a delay, but rather to create slightly G-tuned stacked oscillator sounds, using fast delay times.
The second voice is made with the Erica Synth's black wavetable VCO. I take both the main and sub out to a Unity mixer, then to the IntelliGel Microfold wave folder, the Make Noise Multimode gate, and finally, again, the IntelliGel Linux. From there, it goes to its own channel on an outboard mixer. The second melodic sequencer of the BeatStep Pro controls the 1V per octave on the wavetable VCO and triggers a simple envelope on the Quadra, going to the Make Noise filter and the Linux VCA. This voice is often used a bit more static, but I like to have an audio rate LFO going to the FM input on the wavetable VCO, and an unused looping envelope from the Quadra, so I can plug it either in the wavetable oscillator's wave shape input or the wave folder fold input. All have their own attenuator, so it's easy to control the amount of modulation on those. I can have the envelope running free, or have it triggered from the BeatStep Pro for rhythmic modulation. The 16N rework is used in the same way as the other voice here just one fader directly to the filter, but no sidechain on this voice. With the wavetable oscillator at its core, this is a very flexible voice. So with everything patched up, I end up with a pretty flexible setup, mainly controlled from two easily accessible controllers. This is what the flowchart of the entire patch looks like, with the percussive elements on the left and two synth voices on the right. The triggers of the BeatStep Pro are used to trigger each of the percussive parts, and the envelope used for sidechain effects. The melodic sequencers of the BeatStep Pro control the oscillator and envelope of each voice. The BeatStep Pro on its own is a powerful performance tool. It gives me the possibility to use pre-programmed melodies and percussive patterns and easily switch between them. But the unit is also pretty suitable to improvise. The sequencer knobs can be used to alter or create a melody on the spot, for example, build up a melodic part over a steady running bass line. And it's also easy to program, reprogram, as well as mute and unmute individual percussive patterns. Then, the 16N rework adds extra control over the patch by bringing the right parameters together in a single wire mass free space. I use it to control the volume of each percussive part by sending it to that sound's VCA or gate. Then, some faders are used to modulate the percussive sounds, such as the decay of the hi hat, drum voice, and sample player. For the voices, I only control the filters from the 16N rework. The volume I can set on the modular or outboard mixer. And the various remaining controls I can set on the modular when needed. This setup makes the 16N rework mostly a tool to shape and hands on improvise with the percussive elements. There is some modulation going on in the sounds to keep it moving a bit if I don't do anything, but in general, a lot of dynamic and tension in the beats is being controlled and made with performing with the faders. Combining both control services creates an easy environment for performing. If you'd like to learn more about either of these devices and pick up some extra tips and tricks, have a look at the videos I made specifically about them. 
One of the things I mentioned in those videos is that these units give you the possibility to control multiple aspects of the patch simultaneously, which is really hard to do if you just use your hands to control the modular. Especially for techno-oriented build-ups and breaks, I find this pretty crucial. Still, there are some parameters in this patch I control by just handing the modular itself, like the FM amount to the wavetable oscillator, the sidechain amount, and so on. But these are often choices I make for an entire part or track and don't need to tweak all the time. Finally, the outboard mixer plays an important part in performing. I have at least the kick, drum bus, and each of the voices on separate channels. This really helps to shape the sound by cutting a lot of bass on the voice I use as a lead, for example, or balancing the low end of the bass line with the kick sound, or dialing the right EQ for the percussive parts in the mix. From here, it mostly comes down to creating interesting arrangements, melodies, and using drum modules and sample players to create different sounds and tracks. Also, smash the like, subscribe and bell button on this channel if you get value out of these videos and you'd like to see more. But that's it for now, thanks for watching, and see you next time.